Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how to use Generative Fill AI inside Photoshop and some other AI tools to turn this image into something more professional like this. So we'll basically be correcting the backdrop here, turning it into something really smooth like a seamless paper backdrop. So let's get started. Since we'll have to work on the background, we need a selection of the background. For that, the best way is to select the subject and then invert the selection. There are a lot of tools in Photoshop which help you to select the subject with one go, with one click, but we'll still be going outside Photoshop because in my opinion, it just some of the other AI apps outside do a better and a quicker job at this. So let's quickly head over to Pixel Cut AI. Let's upload this image here. It's completely free to use. This is the background removing tool in Pixel Cut. You would have found the link to this in the description. And once we upload the image here, it's automatically going to remove the background, which will ultimately help us in making the selection when we take it back to Photoshop. So let's do that. All right, so the process has started. Let's wait for this. And the best part about using Pixel Cut is that not only is it free, but when you do download the image now, this transparent image, it maintains the resolution so it doesn't downscale because a lot of free AI tools do that. So let's hit download and then let's open this PNG image inside Photoshop. All right, so we've got the image here. The only thing is that you can see it missed out that stool, but that is pretty easy to select the for, uh, with the Photoshop tools. Because now what we can do is if we just right click and hit duplicate, just make sure on the destination you select the original image so that it'll come on top. So that's gonna be 7.jpg in this case. And once I go back here, this is gonna be here. Right now we don't really need this particular layer because we're gonna be using it later on also not. So right now it's gonna help us to make the selections but later on it's also gonna help us in hiding the imperfections that are generated by generative fill because remember, when we select the background, the edges of that selection will be around her body and hair. So that can distort the subject. That's where later on this layer will come into play also. So let's, right now what we can do is we can just hide this. We don't need it, but we do need it for the selection. So what we can do is just hit control command and click on this. So we get the outline basically of this layer. Okay, and now make sure this is highlighted. This is of no use to us right now. And now what we can do is we just need to select this tool also. But since this is a small selection, we can use the Photoshop tools here. So for example, if we go to the AI object selection tool, we can just hold down shift to add to the selection. Just encircle this. Of course, make sure that this is on the lasso mode here. Okay. And if you just wait, it's going to make the selection. Right, so now you can see that we've got the entire selection that we wanted. Now we want to invert the selection so that we can start using generative fill on everything else apart from her and the stool. So we've got that selection, we're gonna hit generative fill. And as I've shown in a lot of my videos, when you are turning these kind of backgrounds into something that is professional and smooth, the prompt that works the most is plain backdrop. So let's type that. And let's wait for the results here. All right, so you can see that that has pretty much done the job for us. You see, this is the first result that we get. Looks really nice. Don't worry about what it has done to the hair because that's where this layer one will come into play later on, like I mentioned before, just looking at how smooth this is, right? So it has pretty much corrected everything except for uh, some of these wrinkles here, okay? Let's see the second variation. I think that this is also the same. Looks good everywhere apart from just these uh, things at the bottom. And actually this makes it look very real because if you are using a muslin cloth, then sometimes right where the subject is standing, there's bound to be a little bit of wrinkles. The third variation I think is just something else. Doesn't look bad, but not something that we want. So I think we'll stick to either first or second. I think the first, the second one, looks the best because then we just have the problem areas right here. Now what we can do is just create a new layer and let's stamp everything onto this new layer using the shortcut control command alt shift option and E. And now what we need to do is we just need to do the same thing again. We need to work only this time on these areas because that's the only area which doesn't look good right now. So again, we need to do the same thing. We just need to make the selection and then restrict that selection only to these areas. So again, you can use 
the help of this tool, uh, of this layer, which is layer one. So if I hit control command and click on the thumbnail, we get her as a selection. And you can see, I have my object selection tool here. So this was again showing me that if I was to click right now, it'll also select this tool. So let's hold down shift to add to this, just like we had done last time. So we've got this selection back, right? Now what we can do is we can invert this selection again. And now, it's selecting everything which is white, but we only need to select this. So we can take our rectangular marquee tool and just make sure that you are on this intersect with selection mode, okay? So that when we draw something like this, we're telling Photoshop, see both the existing selections right now, whichever is common between, whatever area is common between them, just select that. So this intersection is, uh, tool is really underrated, but in these situations, it can just help you uh, do the job really well. So now we've got that part also. Again, we can do the same thing. We can type in plain backdrop and let's hit generate. All right, and you can see that now, even this part looks really nice. Let's check all the three variations. This is the first one. This looks good. And this looks really nice because we've got some nice shadows also. It didn't really distort the heel too much. And I think this one probably looks the most real. So we're gonna stick with the third one. So we've got at least one objective fulfilled, which, which is that we've got the entire backdrop really smooth. But of course, as you can see, this has caused some distortions on the subject because if I was to hold down Alt Option, click on this original layer, you will be able to see that yes, the background looks fine, but the subject has some distortions. So how can we correct this? Well, this is where that layer one comes into play. This is another benefit of saving that layer. Because remember, this came from Pixel Cut. If I was to enable this now, this had everything but the background. So you can see just by clicking on it, this is visible now, and it pretty much hides most of the issues, right? You can see somewhere some problems are still there, so you can always check it from the original by again holding down Alt Option and just seeing where all are the issues. So there are some issues here, you can see, because anything that was within the boundary of the original subject is now hidden, right? But anything that is still, if the distortion came out of the original boundary of the subject, that will still be seen. Now, first of all, this is not really making too much of a difference, but here you can see that right here on the heel, this is causing some problems. So what you can do is you just have to ask yourself, where is this coming from? So at this point, what I like to do is, I like to call this layer original subject, okay? And just underneath this, this is the part where we stopped, right? We stopped our work with all the AI things that we did. So at this point, make sure this is highlighted. Just stamp everything onto the new layer, again, using that same shortcut. And let's call this AI layer or the AI subject, okay? So now we know that, yes, everything that we did from AI is here. And now only these two layers are relevant. So we can just quickly see that, yes, this is coming from any issues that we're seeing here are coming from the AI subject. For example, this part, now what we can do is make sure the AI subject layer is selected and then you can pretty much take any tool. For example, you can take like a spot healing brush tool, make sure the AI subject layer is highlighted so you're working there. And if you remove this, that's gonna get rid of that particular thing, but it's only working on this and this stays preserved on top. So you can see that that has pretty much done a good job. And some issues like if you do want to correct this thing that was coming out, it made her leg look slightly wide, you can still run it on. And that's just gonna push that back in. But overall, now if we see this shot, this looks really good. And if we quickly compare this with the original, we started off from this. And just by using generative fill twice and a couple of other tools, we were able to achieve our objective. One final thing that we'll do to give it the final touch is like, let's stamp, not here, but right on top of this layer, let's stamp everything back onto this layer. And now we can, now this is optional, but we can probably give it a better composition by let's say giving it more negative space. And also this, cool, this tool was getting cut off. So we can probably just give it some space here and make sure generative expand is selected and let's hit the check mark and let's wait for the results here. Right, so. That looks good. Let's see all the variations. This one just has some issue here. Yeah, I think this one looks really, really nice and professional. So if you are someone 
you want to use AI to correct issues that photographers face and especially studio photographers face, then do check out my course called Fixing Backdrops or Studio Backdrops Using AI in Photoshop, where this is all we do. It's av available via Udemy. You'll be able to find the link in the description. And there, inside the course, there are even more challenging images than this one. Also, if you are someone you're new to Photoshop, I've got a completely free Photoshop for Beginners course, which will teach you all the basics. It has 20 videos and it's completely free. The link to that will also be given in the description. If you are someone you like these videos where AI is really, really changing the game, then follow all my experiments by subscribing to the channel. And in case this video helped you out, do give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.